Hey guys, uh, so today we're going to do a little quick talk about some soil science, so stick around. So we're going to talk about um, fungal and bacterial dominated soil today. I think a lot of people are kind of getting ready, putting their compost into their garden beds, they're planting fruit trees. You know, I might be frozen here, but you guys are all melted. So I thought a good thing that I can teach you guys right now is maybe kind of brushing up on um, what a transitional soil uh, is going to look like. And first we have to kind of talk about uh, the evolution of an ecosystem. What typically happens in nature is there's a disturbance and there is a, um, a transition from a disturbed, dead, sandy uh, soil where weeds will dominate. These weeds have deep tap roots to anchor them into the sand and um, often they're nitrogen fixers so they don't need a lot of nutrition in the sand. Can you hear the birds coming? The birds are coming back. So they have, uh, they're often nitrogen fixers. So the nitrogen fixers will remove the nitrogen out of the air and kind of support the plant even in dead soils. These weeds will spend a couple seasons growing and dying and then they'll start adding organic matter down into the soil. The organic matter is going to be high in nitrogen and what you're going to get is a lot of bacteria starting to grow. This will transition um, into a bacterial dominated grassland. So bacterial dominated grasses, um, flowers, all these leafy green plants, these are things that um, thrive really well when there's not a whole lot of fungus in a system. So all of our kitchen veggies tend to be these um, plants that really like a whole lot of uh, bacteria in the soil. Over time, woodier and woodier brush plants will start growing and these will start dying every season and dropping woodier and woodier material down. The only things in nature that can break this up are uh, fungus, mushrooms. And in fact, before mushrooms had evolved the ability to do this, the world just kind of piled up with a bunch of woody material on the ground. So now we have fungus moving in, starting to break apart and digest all of the woody material on the ground. This is going to transition the soil into slowly and over more time, more fungal dominated than bacterial dominated. After enough of this has happened, you're going to get big trees starting to grow up and push through some of the nitrogen fixing shrubbier bushes, getting up over that, creating an overstory. The ground level stuff will start dying off because it's being shaded and the soil microbiology will get transformed more and more into very, very uh, heavily dominated fungal soils. So this is why when we plant trees in the middle of grass, they die because it's like trying to throw a fish in a tree and wondering why the fish uh, can't live. So when we plant trees, we often mulch very heavily with wood chips and this is exactly to build up the fungal dominated soil, um, which is the environment that it wants to live in. So um, what I'm gonna do this episode is I'm gonna talk about specifically fungal dominated soils, how to build them. Um, and this is for your tree and bush systems. We're down at my kitchen garden right now, and um, this kitchen garden here is, I on purpose, I, I get the soil very bacterial dominated. So what I like to see um, going into a kitchen garden where you're gonna grow tomatoes up trellises and all, uh, you know, cucumbers and zucchinis, is we want a very bacterial dominated soil. So we wanna add and amend with manure, with, um, compost that's largely been made um, with uh, a goal to create bacteria. So it's made with a bunch of leafy greens and kitchen scraps, that sort of thing. That's going to create a very uh, bacterial dominated soil. And then we mulch heavily with uh, a heavy carbon material, typically leaves, uh, wood chips. And that protects the soil microbiology from the sun and the wind and the elements and uh, water evaporation keeps them alive. In a system like this, we want bacterial dominated soil because we want to know what plants we're putting in and we want to know what kind of environment they would naturally grow up and evolve in. And that's a heavily bacterial dominated soil from like a grassland, a native grassland. In the middle here, I have a peach tree 
And um, what I want to do with this peach tree is obviously prune it a bit. <laughs> this thing took off. This thing needs a lot of pruning. Um, but in and around the, the peach tree, I want very fungal dominated soil because I want to transition the soil into something that the tree wants. So when we, I don't know how many of you guys uh, use um, molasses in your soils. Uh, molasses is something that you really uh, want to be careful of when you're putting it into tree systems because uh, bacteria really likes the sugar in the molasses. It's great for these garden soils, but what you're actually going to do is create a very uh, bacterial dominated soil for your trees if you put a bunch of molasses in and sprinkle that around. So let's talk about molasses a little bit and we'll go up to the compost pile. When we add any kind of sugars, oh. <laughs> when we add molasses and sugars to a compost that's already bacterial driven, what we're going to do is we're going to drive that bacterial, um, we're going to make the bacteria go nuts and they're going to replicate like crazy. Um, so what we want to do is be a little bit careful about that if we're going to apply those to tree systems. So I'm kind of trying to weasel my way up to my compost pile here on contour a bit because it's a giant ice rink here. I'm just going to slip and look like an idiot here. So I'm walking down into inside my uh, my swale that's just downhill of the compost pile here. And all the leachate from the snow melts will go through the compost pile and it will go into the swale and feed the fruit trees. With this compost here um, I'm actually going to try to make this as fungally dominant as possible so I'm going to be really careful with putting in uh, a whole bunch of molasses and then we have to be careful about what we do with fish oil as well and if we source fish oil from somebody we kind of have to know how they process it and what they're going to do with it. So the way we're going to keep the bacterial co uh, component down in a compost is actually going to be with humic acid. Um, and we have to be careful with fish emulsion, uh, fish sulfate, fish oils as well. Uh, what a lot of uh, companies will do when they sell you fish oil amendment for your compost is they'll actually heat it up. And when they heat it up, it will separate the oils from uh, the rest of the compost and they skim the oils off. The oils is good... Um, uh, fungus food and good protozoa food and the protozoa eat the bacteria and the protozoa are uh, promoted by lots of humic acid in the compost so uh, if they're skimming off that fish oil to sell it because it's very very um, it's very very expensive and very very valuable from a financial standpoint for them then what they're giving you is a whole bunch of bacterial dominated compost amendment which you can just get by putting in um, uh, molasses if you wanted to do it. So if we want to keep the bacterial component, component down we want to promote um, protozoa and we want to promote pr protozoa by lots of humic acid. So the best way to do that is um, a very heavy carbon content in our compost. Lots and lots and lots of leaves. Okay, And then we want to uh, we want to put it in a bag like a cheesecloth when it's completed and done. We want to put it in a cheesecloth and then we want to um, not shake it around and, and invigorate it, but we just want to uh, pour water over it and let the water soak through and drip down into a bucket. That bucket is going to be filled with liquefied um, humic acid inside of a, uh, a, a liquid solution and then we can spray that and amend that into our uh, garden soils that's heavily uh, wood composted. So in this way we're promoting uh, protozoa, the protozoa is going to eat the bacteria and then the fungus is going to grow inside of the wood chips and all the lignans and the woody uh, carbon, heavy carbon mulch, comp, uh, mulch layer that you have for your fruit trees and we're going to drive that soil into what the fruit tree system wants which is a fungal dominated soil. So you'll do that kind of by yourself just by putting compost, uh, sorry, wood chip mulch down but if you want to take it to the next level and you want to do a compost tea, then you want your compost tea to be um, heavily wooded uh, compost that is just slowly dripping down. And if you want to 
put compost tea in a garden bed that's going to grow uh, vegetables, like leafy vegetables, like kitchen veg, then you want to amend that compost with a inoculation of uh, molasses, water it in, and then compost tea with that in the same way, and then that's going to lead off to a, a very bacterial-driven inoculation that you're going to spray into your into your beds. And then same thing if you want um, heavy bacterial amendment into your garden piles, uh, then you want to go with uh, manures and a very leafy green compost. If you want to go with fungal compost into fruit tree systems, you want to go, you want to ease back on the manure a bit, you want to go with a really heavy woody slower compost system. So you might want to run a pile that's a little more brown for a bit, that's going to take a bit longer. Um, and then you want to also obviously always heavy wood chip mulch. So that's it for today. Um, a little bit of soil science and soil microbiology, the difference between bacterial dominated soils and fungal dominated soils, how you can help drive it from one to the other. You know, bacteria dominated, you want lots of manures, you want lots of bacterial compost with lots of greens in it. You always want to keep it aerobic, remember. You always, always want to keep it aerobic. For tree systems, you want to have your fungal dominated soil, thick wood chip mulch, stay off the molasses amendments, stay off the fish emulsion amendments, especially if you think that the uh, contractor that you're buying it from, the vendor that you're buying it from, is boiling off for the fish oil. So uh, look in the product details for that. If they're boiling off the fish oils, then you're going to create bacterial dominated compost uh, soil amendment. And then do a compost tea uh, with a very heavily dominated fungal component in the compost, a slower, woodier compost. Do that for your fungal tea for your wood systems. A hot compost, hot aerobic compost, you can do that for your uh, compost tea amendment into your garden beds. Happy gardening, and I'll see you next time.